my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Hello, BYWG Podcast Tribe. This is Dr. Noah. For the month of March 2019, the book of the month is none other than Bonnie Hari's new release, Feeding You Lies. And a product of the month is the entire line of superfoods from Four Sigmatic. As a reminder, all the links for the product in the book of the month will be listed in the show notes in iTunes, in our weekly newsletter, and on our website at www.beyondyourwildestgenes.com at the Listen Now tab. Our book of the month is Feeding You Lies by Vani Hari, How to Unravel the Food Industry's Playbook and Reclaim Your Health. Dr. Mike interviewed Vani on the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast, and it was released on February 18th. You can listen to this release on our website, on your smartphone, YouTube, or Spotify. The product of the month is one of our favorite superfood companies, Four Sigmatic. They carry an incredible line of mushroom coffees, functional mushroom elixirs, and a brand new beauty line, and a few new products that I personally really enjoy, like Golden Latte Mushroom Mix, Mushroom Matcha Latte Mix, and Lion's Mane Focus Shots. A quick tip from us to staying healthy through the winter months is to try out their Shaga Mushroom Containing products. You can also listen to me interview the founder of Four Sigmatic, Taro, twice on the BYWG podcast in the archives and our website as well. Enjoy the upcoming podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. I'm your co-host today, Dr. Mike Akinfora, and I have with me today Dr. Anna Kabeka. Anna, how are you? I am great. Thrilled to be here with you, Michael. Thank you. Dr. Anna is a return guest, and I'm thrilled to have her back because she is just releasing a new book called The Hormone Fix, which is going to be released February 26, 2019. So we're thrilled to have her back on the show, thrilled to have her talking about hormones and what you all can do to help yourself. So Dr. Anna Kabeka is a triple board certified and fellow of gynecological obstetrics, integrative medicine, and anti-aging and regenerative medicine. She has special certifications in functional medicine, sexual health, and bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. She's known for her work using natural alternatives and traditional healing modalities for managing menopause successfully. She's the creator of the highly acclaimed Virtual Transformation Programs, Women's Restorative Health, Sexual CPR, and Magic Menopause, the creator of the alkaline superfood drink mighty maca plus and the vulva anti-aging cream jolva she has been interviewed by all major television networks and has been featured in in style huff post and mind body green she is also the author of her new book the hormone fix to be released as i said february 26 2019 she lives in saint simmons island georgia and her four daughters and her dog, Sandy. Dr. Anna, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. So I, I really am thrilled to have you back. We met a couple years ago at um, Michael Fishman's Consumer Health Summit, and uh, you were really one of our first guests when we first started. And look at us now. <laughs> wow. How you've grown and grown. <laughs> That's it. So I, I want to dive into... Um, hormones today, and and there's no one better to talk about it than yourself. Um, before I do that, can we flesh out some of your bio for the people who did not hear about what it is that you do and how you came to be where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I trained in, in gynecology and obstetrics at Emory University in Atlanta, and I was actually a National Health Service Corps scholar. So I came to St. Simons Island, Georgia, and actually north of here, a shrimping village called Darien, McIntosh County, Georgia, one of the poorest counties in our nation, to um, help clients to be a national health servant. And lo and behold, I had to get very creative about how I take care of my patients economically and holistically was the way that I really found that I was able to help them. And, and not just help them, to help myself too. Because part of my journey is that at age 38, I was diagnosed with premature ovarian failure, early menopause, and I was told I would never be able to have another child. And that was devastating news to me and my family. 
And um, I had just complete menopause. I failed the highest doses of infertility treatments. And I know for people listening that that have gone through infertility, have dealt with that, how heartbreaking that is. And and it is it is something that you know it's it's challenging physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually as well as relationally. And we know that. So our journey, you know, was I, I ended up leaving my practice for a year. You know, here I was, this specialist in hormones and and um, medicine and ivory tower trained by one of the best universities in our nation, and I didn't have an answer for me. And it took me on a healing journey around the world, and I met with um, healers from the highest levels of academia to indigenous healers from Native American shaman and um, Indonesian um, healers, as well as an Andean um, healer as well, and just different people with different backgrounds. And it was pretty fabulous. Lo and behold, at age 41, you know, I had reversed my menopause and I conceived a beautiful, healthy daughter. So now at age 50, nearly 53 with a 10 year old, I am here to tell women that we can improve the stat state of our health no matter what condition we're dealing with. And so that's been my personal journey and my, you know, certainly my professional journey as I incorporated the principles I've learned and I've continued to learn into my practice and into the lives of, of my patients and clients now through my online programs around the world. That's a really fascinating story. I, had, I did not realize that you, when we met, uh, you, you don't look your age. That's a compliment. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so and I don't feel my age. So uh, I love that's that. That's even better. <laughs> yes, it is better. <laughs> that is even better. So, Talk to me. Let, let's break this down into um, some of the parts of the book that, that are easily relatable um, so that we're looking for some take homes for folks. Sure. But let's, again, lay some more groundwork. So talk to me about what's going on with, with women's hormones. Yeah. What's the deal? Yeah, absolutely. And actually I'm going to offer your list just a quick and easy while waiting for the book to come out. Just what's, you know, what's happening to my hormones, just an eight page quick download e-guide with a graph. I don't know. I love graphs, so I couldn't get it in the book, but I got it in this handout Awesome. <laughs> to see what's happening with our hormones as the decades change, you know, really from birth through death. And it's, it's important to understand because our hormones do fluctuate throughout time and it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing it's by design but there's a healthy fluctuation and there's unhealthy fluctuation that spurs on diseases so we don't want that either right mm -hmm. so our hormones begin to can begin to fluctuate really we peak we have peak levels of DHEA which is one of our adrenal hormones also an ovarian hormone in women and 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 um, from produced from the testes in men that begins to fluctuate in our 20s. We start to start to get a slight decline. It peaks and then we start to it starts to decline. Progesterone starts to decline in our mid to late 30s. And we tend to experience some symptoms which have been termed estrogen dominance, but are really progesterone insufficiency. And so those are symptoms like mood swings, hot flashes, irritability. And I, one of the things I always tell my clients, Michael, is that if you only hate your husband two weeks out of the month, it's probably your hormones and not your husband. So, <laughs> if it's Bye. only two weeks, right? Uh -huh. So, so um, and that's a real phenomenon because physiology drives our behavior, as you well know. And so one thing that I do in my book, I tease this out. I show them how physiology drives behavior in a very easy to understand way and then how we can use behavior to improve and empower our physiology. Because as a gynecologist, I would like to say, look, I am in charge of your health. I will make you better. And here's this prescription. Here's the surgery. And here you go. But that's not the case. And what instead, it's actually over 90%, 99% is in the control of each individual listening to my voice right now. It is in your control to be the CEO, the physician of your health, to help 
be the detective to uncover what's going wrong in your body and to be healthier tomorrow than you are today, to be more empowered tomorrow than you are today, no matter what your diagnosis is. I've now worked with hundreds of thousands of clients virtually and in my personal practice, tens of thousands, and have seen improvements. Just have to be willing to make some changes. Okay, so talk to me about what some of those changes are. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one thing is that when we, um, you know, one of the things I talk about in my book is the hormone fix, and it's subtitled Burn Fat, Boost Energy, Stop Hot Flashes, Sleep Better, The Keto Green Way. So I hit all those areas, but one thing we want to do right away, we want to improve our willpower. Again, willpower is physiologic. So to improve that, the Keto Green Way that I created um, – really comes into play here. So to explain the keto green way, I talk about, you know, I, I take a twist on the ketogenic diet, but that part is focusing on getting your body into ketosis periodically, initially on a more regular basis to kind of exercise that using ketone for fuel muscle of our body. And that's important because as estrogen levels are declining, so I had mentioned DHEA in our 20s, progesterone in our 30s, estrogen in our 40s and 50s, testosterone kind of slow, gradual over time. But as estrogen levels start to decline or we have estrogen mimickers or hormone disruptors from chemicals and toxins, et cetera, we need estrogen for gluconeogenesis in the brain. So to use glucose for fuel in the brain, we need good, healthy levels of estrogen. So we get this die off of estrogen, and we also get this brain fog. So we want to use ketones for fuel and regain that clarity. So I want women to experience that on as regular basis as they can. But we can't go into this fat-burning state using fat for fuel where all our toxins are stored, etc., without adding on the important green component. And so as functional medicine docs, we talk about detoxification, supporting phase one and phase two of the liver for detox, and adding in the alkalinizers, the dark leafy greens, the lots of micronutrients that our body needs, right? So the minerals and vitamins and antioxidants. So we have to incorporate that in. So I add that into my program. And in my book, I put an easy 10-day detox diet plan, keto, the Keto Green Way, to really kickstart that. So when we are having, when we get to the state and we're eating healthier fats, which women, like I was in college and in high school in the 80s. So, so that's when we had the low fat movement breathing down our necks. And that really did a lot to disrupt our hormones. So now I'm teaching women that we need to get back to some healthy fats because our hormones are made of fats. And we need fats for good brain fuel. We need to burn our body's own reserves too so we can have the healthiest rest of our life as possible. So working to you know, get this information out and have women experience that, a tremendous amount of energy and willpower, often for the first time in their lives. That's wonderful. I, I want to get into... Um... One of, one of the mantras that we talk about for Beyond Your Wildest Genes is test, don't guess. But before I do that, um, talk to me about how um, th there's a difference between, for example, uh, excess, excess estrogen and low estrogen. Mm -hmm. Can you just hit on a couple of like symptoms of each to give people an idea of what the difference is? Yeah, definitely. So with excess estrogen, and that's poorly balanced with progesterone because we're going to have fluctuating levels, but we often see mood swings. We often see irritability, heavy bleeding, irregular cycles, um, heavier cramps oftentimes with elevated levels of estrogen. With lower levels of estrogen, we typically see, you know, um, decreased energy, slight brain fog, uh, vaginal dryness, mm -hmm. a loss of receptivity for sex, loss of interest in sex, and um, memory issues. I had to think about that one. <laughs> 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 How appropriate. <laughs> um, is, is estrogen and progesterone, is it kind of like a... Um... A seesaw thing? Is it? Is there a balance between the two? Like, what are we looking for? Is there a ratio? 
How would you best describe that? Yeah, there's no well-defined ratio. And this is an area where we're still kind of teetering it out. You know, we know that hormones are energetic molecules, and we just haven't begun to really understand how to accurately test them over time. So we have the fluctuations on an hourly basis, on a monthly basis, on an annual basis with our hormones. So um, what we typically like to see is there's a... Um, like a homeostasis that our body gets into, a rhythm that our body gets into with our hormones. When we see this estrogen dominant, we can even have low estrogen and low progesterone, yet still have these estrogen dominant symptoms like the PMS, the irritability, the mood swings, the heavier or regular cycles. The problem is when we don't like correct that through, you know, detoxifying the liver supporting the body with natural progesterone and removing, you know, any exogenous sources of estrogens, then we run into the case where, you know, you're looking at me and I want to operate and do a hysterectomy or, you know, give you some antidepressants or whatever it may be. But if we take this approach and we work to detox and we work to maybe use some bioidentical progesterone or adrenal adaptogens, you know, and follow the nutrition and lifestyle recommendations that I put forth in my Keto Green Way, my book, The Hormone Fix, what we see is is that restoration of a balance. So, and we're not exactly sure what a great ratio will be. It certainly would, it would change for individuals, but we see that harmonizing or homeostatic type of situation within clients, within individuals where the symptoms go away. And then for, from my clinical experience in doing this, I went from doing two to three surgeries a week to two to three a year. Wow. Huge difference. Huge, Huge difference. Yep. Give patients the power back to control their health and their body. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Where does, um, where does testosterone fit in all this and, and kind of explore them like, so that women know, like, you, you need testosterone, obviously, um, but most people don't know that. So just explore that a little bit for me. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I put this in my handout, and there's certainly uh, detailed information in my book on the androgens, testosterone and DHEA. So every woman has testosterone. We need testosterone. Testosterone is great for libido. It's good for muscle. It's good for strong bones. It's good for healthy brain and focus, all of those good things. So women and men both have testosterone, but women have it in much lower amounts, like a a fraction of a man's testosterone. And we need it as we grow older. So Michael, to tell you a story, when I first started practice here in Southeast Georgia, I was the first female OBGYN bilingual OBGYN, and um, had a client come to me, this beautiful 5 foot 10, um, 63-year-old, silver-haired dynamo who was a president of a biotech firm. She came to me. She'd been living on St. Simon's Island, and I wanted to see a female gynecologist. So my first week in practice, she comes into my office, and she says, Dr. Anna, I'm 63. I had ductal carcinoma in site two of the breast, and I was told... I could never take estrogen. Well, I have such vaginal dryness and discomfort and pain. I have no desire to have sex. And I'm a woman of the 60s. And me and my husband, I really, I would rather die than live this way, doctor. How can you help me? And I was like, whoa, okay. Let me look at my doctor's bag, right? So I look and I look and I look and I didn't have anything. And this was right my first week into private practice. And so I was like, okay, well, let me go to the research. And that's what I did. And so that's where I explored testosterone in women and DHEA in women. And lo and behold, I did lab work on her, figured this stuff out, did lab work on her. This is 1999. And the lab work came back normal. Her testosterone result was zero. And her lab work came back normal. Because they didn't have ranges or the sensitivity of testosterone testing at that time was for men. So women's level, zero was normal because most women... Over 50 have a zero, you know, according to that testing. That was a mass spec testing. Crazy, right? Right. Crazy. So that's why we need optimal levels, not normal. So that blew my mind. And yet all the research showed that androgens, even vaginal estrogen in women with a history of breast cancer, decrease morbidity and mortality. That means that it improves their quality of life. 
it improves their quality of life and they're less likely to die than if they didn't have that treatment. So, and that research has been substantiated over now 20 something years of, of exploring this field. So I use, and what I work with women, you know, in sexual health and especially with vaginal dryness and issues that vaginal dryness, urinary leaking, incontinence, it is important and imperative as we're growing older that we keep our pelvic floor healthy. And I'm, I'm diverging, but it's so important because women don't talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to recognize it. And then sometimes they're looking at surgery or they're, you know, really at a point where it's caused such a problem in their quality of life. We stop exercising because of it. We become more sedentary because of it. We lose confidence because of it, you know. Um, so those are all issues. So that's why I'm passionate about this topic and improving women's sexual health. And in the Hormone Fix, I have a whole topic, a whole chapter on this area. That's, yeah, that is awesome. Um, thanks, thanks for explaining that. One of the things that I noticed in the book, I was fortunate enough to have a, a, an advanced copy of it, uh, and, and one of the things that you talk about, I just wanted to highlight for people, in, in one of the chapters you, you're talking about testing, don't guess, mm -hmm. and there's, there's, there's a bunch of questionnaires which I think are, are brilliant. Um, Thank you. But the one thing that you do that I never get to see is a, a positivity self-assessment questionnaire. Could you just hit on that a little bit? I yeah. think it's really important. Yeah, you know, and I, I made that up because as a young gynecologist in my practice, all the questionnaires were, you know, are you angry? Are you fat? Do you, you know, I mean, do you feel bloated? Are you having pain? Are you, you know, I mean, that's our, that's our PMS questionnaires, right? Yep. And so I'm like, oh, my gosh, what if I created mm -hmm. – an inventory that asks these questions that are also, um, you know, therapeutic, not just diagnostic. So in my PSQ, my positivity self-assessment questionnaire, I ask these questions on a scale of, you know, zero to three. How do you rate this? These statements? I love my body. And I usually tell them to say, I love my sexy body. You know, I feel, you know, I feel strong or energetic. I, and alert and focused, you know, and so those are those are positive affirmations because Michael, sometimes a client would come back, especially some teen clients, I would note, and all their answers would be zero straight down the line. And I have a lot of work to do with them that goes beyond, you know, a, you know, a prescription of any kind. Right. Yep. So that for me and as they do it over time, they enjoyed doing it. So I became, I made it a standard for everyone to fill out my positivity self-assessment questionnaire and I use it in my online programs. I have women say these seven statements and it's just really, really a good way to look and also see, are, am I feeling less good about myself when I'm having my periods or cycles or, or what's happening at this time of the month or, or other? And so that's why it's a 30 day questionnaire. Wonderful. Could you share like one or two about those? Yeah. So about the um, statements that statements. you have women do. Yeah. Yeah. So one is, um, I, you know, the I love my sex, you know, I love my body. And mm -hmm. because that one is really powerful, because when we feel that um, we don't, we're not liking our body. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe I don't feel like I love my body today, but if I'm a zero, it goes beyond that. Right. Mm -hmm. We can start focusing on that. Well, what do you what do you love about yourself? We could start there. And then I'm alert and focused. So many women over time, and this can, if it's affecting, if it's hormonally related, brain fog is a, is often a hormonal issue, mm -hmm. inflammatory and hormonal. So that helps us as we work to get those hormones balanced, we start to see an improvement in the, in that, in that symptom, like having more clarity, having more focus. And that's, that's just powerful. Absolutely. So, yeah. And it's just often just being aware and being able to see something positive. And then I am social and friendly. We always ask the question, are you feeling depressed? Are you anxious? Man, like I feel under attack when I take those questionnaires, when I have to sure. fill one out for my child or me. Right. Sure. So, you know, am I social and friendly? Because that also tells me hormonal oxytocin. Ho oxytocin, I talk about this in my book, is one of the most powerful hormones in our body. And we need to get more of it, right? We Absolutely. just need more of it. That's peace, love, connection. And when we are under stress, 
when we are um, perceived or real stress, Mm -hmm. we can become oxytocin deficient. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. You are welcome. I love this questionnaire. Thank you for enjoying it as much as me. Yeah, you got it. Um, So I want to dive into um, the hormone fix a little bit. Uh, And you you brought up before the 10-day keto green detox. Talk to me about the role of ketosis in all of this, um, in in hormonals. Uh, Tell me where that fits in. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I would love as a gynecologist to say that it's all about your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, you know, it's all about that. But in fact, it's not. It's really about these major hormones that we have to get under control. And that is insulin, cortisol, and oxytocin, those three hormones. And I explain them in the book and, and give some good analogies to really make them come to life. But at um, insulin, and we hear a lot about that, right? Insulin, diabetes, insulin resistance, you know, and, and how it leads to diabetes. It leads to metabolic syndrome, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, cancer, all of it, right? And so to become more insulin sensitive is to improve the quality of our life. And so in my test don't guess chapter, I talk about four key tests I want everyone to know, just like they know the number on the scale, right? They should know these numbers. And one of them is the hemoglobin A1C, because we know that even though the lab test will say, oh, well, if you're, you know, you know, above seven, you're diabetic, right? right. But we know that every point, every 0.1 point above 5.3, we're increasing our risk to dementia and Alzheimer's exponentially. So to have a six, a hemoglobin A1C of six or even 5.7 is not acceptable. We need to get it down to five, 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 you know, around five. Let's just say that, be strict. Get it as low as you can get it, Right. And so, uh, so that's a point that I make. So ketosis, the way I use it for my clients is intermittent fasting. I want clients to not be like, and I like to have an earlier dinner for my clients so they get a sound, restful sleep. Many people nowadays are struggling with insomnia. You know, I mean, I know I've been there. I've been there a few times. So awake in the middle of the night, covers on, covers off, tossing, turning, mind ruminating on something. I know I've been there. So what we have to do is shift that and so that our body can rest and restore. So we wake up feeling refreshed and having getting into that state of ketosis, having an earlier dinner and that intermittent fasting between dinner and and breakfast when we break fast is really important. Research also shows I just want to point this out, too, is that when we eat after 7 p.m., we secrete nearly 70 percent more insulin. That's crazy. Say, say, say that again. Yes. What did you just say? <laughs> According to the research, when we eat after 7 p.m. at night compared to eating earlier, uh-huh. we secrete nearly 70% more insulin. No wonder wow. we're fat, tired, and our bodies aren't resting overnight. Wow. Yes, that's huge. So making huge. that little adjustment is really powerful. Mm-hmm. That, that's amazing. Um. Talk to me about keto green. What do you mean by that? And why is that so important? Yeah, and it is really important. So that's the way to make a really healthy ketogenic diet work for women, especially in the perimenopause and menopausal time period. So one thing that, you know, we I always have asked my clients to do once I started getting into functional medicine was check their urinary pH. Not that it, there's no association with, not a, any significant association with blood pH, but urinary pH is one of those clues, like how much did the scale go up from last night to this morning? You know, what's my body temperature today compared to last night? You know, and so just one of those markers that give us a, a reading. So our urinary pH, research has shown that a urinary pH 7 or greater is, you know, on an average is associated with decreased metabolic syndrome, decreased hypertension, decreased diabetes, overall better, healthier bones, which is really important for all of us, especially as we're living longer. And um, and it's just it's one of those aspects that we bring into our life through nutrition and life. We know that if we're secreting 
cortisol, we're stressed out, our urinary pH is going to be acidic, and I don't care how good your vegan or vegetarian diet is. You know what I mean? Yep. So we've got to balance that. So I teach that through the lifestyle factors in my book. Very cool. And just easy. For pennies, we can check our urinary pH. So I, I advocate that, and I created these urine test strips to make life easy. I put pH pad and ketones on the urine test strip so we can check our urinary pH and ketones. And while honestly, you know, when I survey my my audience about when they start my pro, one of my online programs and I make them do this, I'm like, they have to do it three to five times a day. Let's just figure out what's happening. Do your detective work, right? This is a clue. Sure. They hate it initially. Like only 10% are geeks and really want to like it, you know? Mm-hmm. And the but by the end of the second, third, fourth week, there's 90% 90% of them love it because they're figuring it out. They're learning. You know, they had a fun, they ate the same food, you know, for example, in one situation, but were really stressed and were very acidic and didn't feel good, couldn't sleep. The next day they had, you know, friends and family and ate the you know, same similar food. And lo and behold, we're alkaline. How cool is that? And to be able to monitor that, control our internal physiology and our behaviors to really improve our physiology in general. Cool. So what are some of the benefits? Because very rarely have I seen anybody make this connection like you have. Um, What are the benefits of keto, but also becoming more alkaline? Like uh, there's very few uh, folks who have tied these two together. So if you could explain that to people. Yeah, I'm happy to. Because when I told you when I was 38, I was um, early, you know, diagnosed with early menopause. I was told the only way I wouldn't be able to have a child was egg donation, right? I was Mm -hmm. given that sentence. And um, so, you know, reverse that, pregnant at 41, kept, you know, I'd lost 80 pounds, kept that off for nearly a decade, and age 48 hit. And so I experienced what so many patients came into me that and told me they were experiencing. And that they would come in and say, Dr. Anna, I am gaining 5, 10, 20 pounds, and I'm not doing anything different. And I would be like, really? Really, you're not? Right? Sure, you're not, right? <laughs> And then 48 hit, and lo and behold, after keeping nearly 80 pounds off for a decade, I um, gained 5, 10, 20 pounds and wasn't doing anything different, really, you know? (laughs) So so it was like, whoa, what's going on? And I was, you know, practicing, and this is why I say it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones, and came across the keto green, I came across and combined this approach. I, um, every time in the perimenopausal patient, you know, when we have hormone issues or we're getting older and I would put some on a very carb restricted diet for either weight loss or because they had seizure disorder, there was some other, um, dementia going on. And I really wanted to follow that science. The clients would come back to me and tell me they're irritable. Well, when I tried to do it, I called it more than irritable. I called it going keto crazy. I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? And so I, so I just like had the, you know, light bulb to start checking my urine again, you know, and, and I was completely like urine pH of five, 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 as low as my reading would go. Yep. And so I'm like, what if I just start getting more alkaline and then get into ketosis? So I worked to get my body really alkaline. You know, it was a lot of stress at that time too. So between, um, nutrition and lifestyle. And then once my urine pH was alkaline, I went into ketosis, really restrict the curbs, carbs more and combine the two. Let me tell you, I was like energized enlightenment. I can't even begin to explain how wonderful that felt to me for the first time. The fog had lifted. My brain was clear. I was patient. I was kind, which is important as a mom of teenagers, right? Sure. So otherwise, I really know how to take advantage of you. And they were all over it. So... um So regaining that mental sharpness and clarity was beautiful. But also for me, it was like an eye opening um, or a door opening into spiritual health and spiritual clarity as well. And then I looked into the research. I'm like, I can't be the only one. Well, lo and behold, 100 years ago, nearly 100 years ago, a science at Cambridge, and I talk about the study in my book, looked at combining alkalinity with keto ketosis in a uh, population when they were looking at seizure seizure disorder and alkalinity seemed to improve the ketogenic results so that was that and there was nothing nothing ever followed up to that that I could find in literature so we definitely want to do studies 
um, at some point, and hopefully we can get studies going looking at this, especially in the menopausal patient. So that combined with the fact that if we don't use glucose very well in the brain, and we're experiencing brain fog as one of the most common complaints of women as we're getting older, then um, we need to, you know, we definitely need to, we need to explore this. We need to do something about it. And now, again, I've had thousands of patients go through this methodology and just get fabulous results. And it's not just about the weight loss. Like I said, you know, it's good to look good, but it's so important to feel good. And and that's a really big part of it, too. Clients tell me the best compliment they get is like when they're told, oh, my gosh, you look so healthy and radiant. You know, what are you doing? And that's this is exactly what they're doing. So let's say somebody's coming to us with uh, having – eaten a standard American diet their whole life and, and they, they're going through these things. Like, what would you recommend in, in the book, of mm-hmm. course, um, like to get started? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Just start with this. Yeah. So definitely like one of the first things I do is start with that. Um, actually, just start each day with a keto green shake just to start with some healthy keto green. So healthy fats. Lots of good alkalinizers. So, for example, I can I'll make a keto green shake, and my daughter Ava Marie loves this one. I'll share with you. It's a, a quarter to a half of an avocado, depending on the size. Mm-hmm. It's um, some of my keto green protein powder, which is about 14 grams of protein, and some MCT oil in there, and then a handful of whatever green I have in the fridge, literally. So it's a handful of kale, a handful of spinach, a slice of ginger, which I like to put in. And some, if you have chia seeds or flax seeds, so good for hormone balancing and estrogen detoxification. So I would throw in a tablespoon of chia seeds and flax seeds. I add in my Mighty Maca Plus, but again, you just power in the grains, blend, add water or coconut milk, blend that up and enjoy. So that's a, that, cause you're starting with low, you know, very low carb. We want to start low carb in the morning and healthy fats. So we're not going to have cravings. And again, willpower is physiologic. So as long as we're starting the day in this way, kind of the reverse of the standard American way, you know, we're going to have that willpower throughout the day. So that's one way. And then we're supporting the liver. We've got these micronutrients in it and healthy protein and fats. We're supporting detoxification. And that's really, that's really important for healthy hormone balance. Wonderful. Where do you see, um, uh, Let's let's look at this. Where do you see like intermittent fasting fitting into all of this? Oh, on a regular basis. So research has shown that um, if we keep 12.5 hours between dinner and breakfast, we have a significantly decreased risk of breast cancer. Wow. And um, the research was published in 2017, I believe, from the Journal of American Medical Association. And it looked at um, that interval of 12.5 hours. And so that women who had a interval of 12.5 just between dinner and breakfast, that they had a lower risk of occurrence of breast cancer in that study. So that's powerful information. I think that should be shouted from, you know, that should be headline news. So if we eat, you know, ideally by 6 p.m. at night or and make that a lighter meal, so we kind of have to change the way we're doing things Mm -hmm. and break fast with a healthy green, you know, keto green smoothie or keto green breakfast, and I give plenty of recipes in my book, then we're really improving the quality of our life. And those, you know, we're creating insulin sensitivity because we're allowing that intermittent fast for insulin to go nice and, and way down and, and to really stop the, you know, my clients, I, no snacking, right? Stop the snacking. That creates insulin resistance. Stop the snacking. So intermittent fasting is essential. And even if it's 12, I say 12.5 to 15, but start at 12.5. Start at 12 if you, if you, you know, or 11 to start where you are right now and work on extended it, extending it. Uh, brilliant. Thank you. You also mentioned just in passing before, uh, maca. And, and this is what I know you have a product that you've used, uh, and you, you formulated yourself. Talk to people uh, about why maca is so important and what does it do? Yeah, absolutely. You know, part of my healing journey, like I went to Peru and 
Um, and when I was there, they'd say, oh, well, if you're infertile, drink maca. If your baby's not thriving, drink maca. If you're tired, drink maca. And then they would elbow my husband and say, it's the Peruvian Viagra, drink maca. <laughs> and so, of course, I had to research, well, what is this, right? Well, it turns out maca's in the cruciferous family, which we know is breast healthy, right, from like cauliflower, broccoli. So it's actually a root that grows above the, you know, in the high mountain ranges, 11,000 feet in the, in Peru, in the Andes. And it's, and it's unique to Peru. And it contains a specific protein not found in anything else. And there is called macaines. And also, lo and behold, as I looked into the makeup of maca, it's also rich in arginine. So arginine, as we know, increases nitric oxide, which is how Viagra works, right? It stimulates yep. blood flow, vasodilation, good healthy heart, cardiovascular system. So the ancient Incans, it's reported that they would drink maca before they went into battle to increase their stamina and endurance. And so here's this power food. So so I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, I have to drink it. But I couldn't stand the taste. I couldn't stand the taste. So being, you know, growing up with a family of chefs and, and uh, culinary whizzes, I just started adding different antioxidants with it, different ingredients as I went to make it palatable because I knew it was something I had to drink. And then when I came back and, um, you know, I, I knew there was nothing like this available. So I created it for myself and my patients. And now it's been we'll have our 10th year anniversary this year. And it's just been a really, really solid superfood combination with the Mighty Maca Plus that I created. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And uh, we will have we will have um, that information in the show notes as well. And um, and I got to tell you, I'm really cognizant of your time, and, and I appreciate you sharing your passion and your book with our listeners. Is there anything else that you want to hit before we say goodbye? I, I think, you know, just want to tell listeners to not give up hope, whatever diagnosis you've been labeled with, however you're feeling that you can recharge your own health and very simply. So I encourage you in that journey and I'm, I'm happy to help along the way. Wonderful. What was the link that you said that you for the was it a quiz? What was it? That you oh, said? so um, for the hormone um, the hormone ebook, what's happened yeah. to my hormone ebook. So yeah. I have to give you that link, um, in the, um, I have to give you, I have to send you that link, but okay. my website is dranna.com. And I'll also give you a link for a, a four pack free trial of Mighty Maca Plus for your okay. listeners to try. So I'll give you that link too. Wonderful. I, I really appreciate that, folks. That'll be in the show notes. Um, I really hope that you, enjoyed this interview as much as I did. I greatly appreciate you being on the show today, Dr. Anna. Uh, Folks, if you like what you heard, please go to iTunes and leave a review. It helps us to help others find us and spread the good word of what we're doing here. So I want to say uh, again, thank you and have a great day. Ciao.